Before we get in the video, once again, if you guys like the content or provide here, to be sure to subscribe today to the channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming content as we look through the NHRA countdown to the championship. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Round two of the NHRA countdown to the championship wrapped up this past weekend at ZMAX Dragway in Concord, North Carolina, as the NHRA has now made their final stop on the East Coast as they get ready to head west towards Pomona to wrap up the championship. The 2024 edition of the Carolina Nationals continues to build on the hype and momentum that it saw last year after its historic 300 mile an hour run of the eighth mile set by Mike Salinas, and in my opinion, continues to solidify itself on why it deserves a place in the countdown to the championship. Some fans have said in the past that because of the fact that it already has a four wide day, it doesn't need a second day in the countdown. Well, with how this race took place this weekend throughout qualifying and race day, I'm starting to believe it has started to solidify its place, even though it might have already had in years past. Three of the top four championship points in the Pro 4 categories saw new points leaders exiting Charlotte. Meanwhile, the runaway train of Austin Proc continues to build steam as they get set for their westward expansion towards a more than likely possible funny car world title. Looking into the highlights from today's eliminations in pro stock motorcycle. The day belonged to Matt Smith. After once again having a stellar qualifying performance, he was finally able to capitalize on momentum and secure his second one of the season at his home race. With 15 bikes on the property this weekend, he found himself with a solo run to kick off race day. He run his quickest pass of the day at 6 833. In round two, he would defeat his wife Angie Smith and his teammate Gianna Evaristo in the semifinals where he would meet up with Richard Gatson, who has now gone to both final rounds in the countdown. In round one, Richard defeated the rat Ron Turner with his quickest and fastest run of the day with an 8846 at 197 miles an hour. In round two, he would defeat the Seattle winner of Chase Van Sant, and then the semis would be gifted a bye for the second weekend in a row as Gage Herrera would suffer a costly red light in the semis. In the finals, Matt Smith would also be gifted the win as Richard Gadsden went 13 thousandths of a second red in the final round. But it wouldn't have mattered as Matt Smith would run his fastest run of the day at 199.35 miles an hour. In Pro Stock, the now titled Big Four of the class once again strengthened its grip on the battle for the championship. All four would occupy the top four spots in qualifying with the elite pair of Eric Enders and Aaron Stanfield holding on to the top spots over the KB Titan pair of Greg Anderson and Dallas Glenn. And by the time the semifinals came around, each would find their rivals of the other team with the top two point representatives of each moving on to the finals as Dallas Glenn defeated Eric Enders and Aaron Stanfield defeated Greg Anderson to once again lead up to another Stanfield versus Glenn showdown. This time seeing the hometown KB Titan driver taking home the win to retake the points lead in pro stock. In Funny Car, the big question in everyone's mind was who could stop the runaway train that is Austin Proc? It looked to be that going into race day, Matt Hagen might have had something to answer for the JFR star, but as Sunday eliminations played out, it became clear that Proc for the third weekend in a row was unstoppable on race day as they ran consistent mid to low 390s on race day. Defeating Alexa Joy in round one, Ron Caps in round two, his teammate Jack Beckman who debuted a new chassis to fit himself in the semis and in the finals would meet up up against Matt Hagen, who defeated Dave Richards in the first, had a buy in round two as the 13 cars had entered the event, and defeated second in the points Bob Task in the third in the semifinals. And in the finals, Matt Hagen would beat Proc off the line, but the Proc Rocker would drive right around the reigning funny car champion and secure his third win in a row and number seven on the season. Lastly, in top fuel, the craziness picked up another level on race day. This time, fate would show kindly to the part-time driver of Doug Foley, who would have one of his best Sundays of his career after qualifying 12th. In round one, he would narrowly defeat Tony Schumacher after Tony's car began to fade towards the finish. In round two, he would beat Justin Ashley in a pedal fest while Ashley narrowly avoided slamming into the left lane wall. And in the semis, he would blow the motor at the finish line, but Clay's popped as soon as he hit the throttle. In order for the Cinderella story to continue, he would need to defeat the winner from the Reading Nationals of Antron Brown, as after qualifying 10th, he would defeat Steve Torrance, take out his father Billy Torrance in the second, and defeating the reigning champion of Doug Coletta in the semis. 
In the final round, the clock would strike midnight for Doug as Antron Brown would power down the track to secure his second win of the countdown and the fifth of the season. As for how the points were shaken up in the final East Coast race of the season. I said Gage Herrera's red light was costly. Well, it was. As for the first time since the start of the 2023 season in Gainesville, Gage Herrera is not the points leader in pro stock motorcycle as Matt Smith, who was the last person to lead it after the 2022 season, now holds a 25 point lead over the once unbeatable rider in the pro stock motorcycle category. Richard Gadsden's back-to-back -back final round has also closed the battle down to 27 points, covering the first three spots in the class or in two rounds of eliminations. In pro stock, Dallas Glenn has resumed the points lead over Aaron Stanfield, but only by a meagerly eight points. Eric Enders continues to hold on to a three-round deficit in third, with Greg Anderson four rounds back in the fourth spot. As for the rest of the field, their chances are waning quickly as Jake Coughlin Jr. is now 166 points back in the fifth position. In a funny car, like I said back in the beginning, the runaway train of the prop rocker has a stranglehold over the entire class as he has a 129 point gap over the field after going back to back to kick off the countdown. Reminiscent of the boss man John Forrest when he went on his decade of dominance in the 1990s. JR Todd is the big loser this week after falling back to the sixth position exiting Charlotte, and Jack Beckman continues to close down the gap on second place Bob Task at a third. Lastly, in top fuel, Antron Brown now holds on to a healthy lead after going back to back in the countdown as well, with Justin Ashley and Sean Langdon's early round exits on Sunday and Doug Coletta losing to Antron in the semis and has allowed Antron to secure a 53 point lead over Justin Ashley heading into St. Louis. Once again, we do have highlight videos to show you courtesy of NHRA on Fox. So let's watch that and then let's look forward to now our westward trip as we get set for Pomona kicking off in St. Louis. A red light start for Gadsden by 13 thousandths of a second. Matt Smith basically unopposed. The Denzo flag and team just made it up to the top end of Matt Smith. A big kiss from his wife, Angie Smith, and you are now the points leader. What message do you hope this sends to Gage Herrera? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. We just we got a good bike this weekend, and uh, this Denzo outlaw bear, Greg Butcher truck, and Mark Stockseth, Smith truck, and Max ECU, everybody helps us. Steve Nichols, thank you for coming. My wife, Angie, Gianna, Scrappers Racing. Man, it's a dream come true to win at your home track. Oh man, Harp, or rather, Glenn's car made a big move to the left. That may be just enough to give the advantage to Stanfield. No, it's good enough for Glenn. 662 beats a 663. We talked about a couple of defining moments today for Dallas. He had to beat Erica, he did, and he had to slay Stanfield, and he did. This it's is called. the 400th career win for Chevrolet and Pro Stock. KB Titan versus Elite, Aaron Stanfield versus Dallas Glenn. It is a rivalry that we have watched brood all season long, but you're holding that Wally. How much pride is in that Dallas? Oh, a lot. You know, I uh, I got to work really hard for this. I'm really tired and, uh, whew, you know, Aaron and I always have really good races. He's super tough, super great racer. You know, we uh, I didn't drive. I don't feel like I drove as good as I was doing in, in Reading. But uh, I definitely drove a lot better there in the final. I had to earn that one. I, that thing went hard left. I had to drive it out of the wall. But, you know, Rad Torque Systems, I'm sure they're cheering on from home. DPF Parts Direct, Summit, everybody at KB Titan Racing's here. Uh, thank you, Ken and Judy. And right on. Hey, got the points lead back. Woo! The experience of Matt Hagen. They thunder off the starting line. Hagen's 51 to Brock 70. And at the stripe, it is Austin Brock with a 392.4 at 326 miles an hour. Seven wins on the season. Austin and Brian Lones just said you have a points lead that almost seems insurmountable. You said you made big changes ahead of the semis with your proc rocket. How much trust exists within this team? Oh, all of it, man. My dad and Thomas and Nate Hildall and every one of these Cornwall tools guys is just so incredibly smart. Uh, they, they study their craft every single day and, and it, it shows on the racetrack and it sure is fun. So uh, 
This uh, this trophy right here, it's going to Rick Hendrick. I know he's out there watching. He's in Europe right now. He wanted to be out here this weekend and couldn't. And uh, yeah, Hendrick Cars doubled up this HendrickCars.com doubled up this weekend with Kyle Larson. What a weekend right in his hometown. Uh, so proud to drive this Chevrolet Camaro SS. This is uh, a dream come true. Wow! They lead the starting line. Antron is out first. Doug Foley's trying to hang with him, and it's Antron Brown back to back in the countdown. 384-8 outruns a respectable 386-2. And for Antron Brown, a team that seemed to struggle in midseason, they are in championship form. And as Antron stares at the Wally, he goes back to back in this playoff. And we had talked to you ahead of Reading of while you could be a wild card in this countdown, and now you have emerged as a favorite. Why? We, just, we never quit, Amanda. We just keep working hard, digging. No matter where we're at in qualifying, you got to show up on race day. We keep on. We have that mindset, staying humble, staying hungry. All the glory goes to God. We just never quit, man. And uh, I'm just so proud and blessed to be on this race team. Matco Tools here with Lucas Oils, Toyota Streamlight, everybody. FBP, Hanks are first. We love them. Summit Racing. We're going to see what we can do. Keep it going, baby. Woo! So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is a bit of a late video. I was out at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Battle on the Bricks for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Sadly, I was not able to get media credentials for that event, so I went as a spectator. But we are looking forward to getting the cover. The St. Louis Midwest Nationals live at St. Louis. We're only going to be there on race day, sadly. But we will be live in Dallas and hopefully in Pomona for the NHRA Finals. So if you want to continue to support the channel, and get constant updates on what's going on within the NHRA countdown to the championship, then be sure to subscribe today to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming content as we get set to wrap up the championship fight. Be sure to follow me on all social media pages down below and Mighty Mac 3 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Be sure to like, comment, and once again, subscribe to the channel. And until St. Louis on Sunday Eliminations, this has been Mighty Mac. We'll see you next time.